grace to you and peace from God, your Father who has adopted you as his own child forever in holy baptism. In his beloved and only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, your Savior who proclaims to you the word of absolute forgiveness. And the Holy Spirit, who draws you through his word to come and taste and see that the Lord is good this day in the body and blood of your crucified and resurrected Savior, Jesus, for salvation and life anew. Amen. The only two human senses that are not described in our gospel reading for this day or by Peter, the eyewitness, is smell and taste. We're not told what they might have smelled in the air on that most glorious day on top of that holy mountain. Nor what they might have tasted in their mouths, even as we always do. Even when we're not eating, there's always that background taste in the mouth. Mmm, coffee. but in particularly what God is drawing us through this gospel to recognize that the entirety of our human experience is about apprehending him for who he is when he is among us, particularly through or sight, or feeling, and, of course, our hearing of his word. The transfiguration of Jesus is a metamorphosis. That's the Greek word that's used to describe this. You best know from your studies in elementary school, because it's probably then when we first learned that term or at least its concept. And maybe not even in school, but just being out in nature and discovering that butterflies begin as caterpillars. We use different words to describe those two different forms of the very same creature. Even in its caterpillar-like form, it's still a butterfly. It's not time for it to show who it is fully until God's appointed time in accord with how he has made the laws of nature, particularly with regard to that most beautiful creature in the end. This is what we see in the metamorphosis of Jesus on that holy mountain. This is who he is, who he has always been in his incarnation and human flesh. He wasn't changed with regard to who he actually is. But now there is a glimpse of his future metamorphosis. Who he is at the end and will be forever. It's a most glorious thing. Peter, James, and John 
perhaps not even expecting that day what they were about to experience. But then as Jesus is there on the mountaintop with them, speaking his word and teaching lessons like he always does, wow. They are not only on the top of the world, but they are also in heaven at the very same time. We're getting a glimpse of the metamorphosis of the earth when it comes at the end of days, where it meets heaven again. For this is why all of a sudden there on that holy mountain is another holy trinity together with that trinity of disciples Peter, James, and John. There's a heavenly trinity of the prophet Moses and the prophet Elijah and the greatest of all prophets, Jesus. In conversation. And yet there's more. The testimony of God himself. Speaking the very same words that were spoken at the baptism of Jesus. With the appearance of the Father and the Spirit in the form of the dove. As the Son of God stood in the Jordan River. For his baptism and God the Father's proclamation, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Three trinities is a depiction of heaven and earth rejoined. This is where we're headed because that is what our eternal destiny is. God is taught this in his holy scriptures. While for now, heaven and earth are fallen away from one another. Earth has fallen with the sin of our first parents and continues to separate from God as the sin of the world becomes more manifest in these latter days of the earth's existence. At the same time, consider this. For the sake of you, you, dear children of God, you faithful disciples of Jesus, you who hear and heed the testimony of the Holy Spirit, you're getting a glimpse of what the reality is now. Because you are Christians, you live at every moment of your life on a holy mountain top. We don't see it because the cloudiness of life in this fallen world necessitates our inability to see this reality. But God is giving you the vision to see it. The eyes of faith. See that not only are we here, as well as our ears, we can hear each other. Right now, hearing me, having the floor, hearing each other with the common, ordinary rustling of human beings. After all, we're not statues. And also the ability to feel and, and touch and experience each other right here in our very presence. We are also here in heaven. We proclaim that in the communion liturgy. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who is here joined with us on this holy mountain, 
today. Jesus, the host of this feast, the prophets Moses and Elijah and all the rest, major and minor, everyone who has gone before us having walked this life of faith in this world, hearing Jesus, heeding that word, as a light that shines in a dark place to guide us through the cloudiness of life and into that place where we need no artificial light because God himself will be our eternal light. The light that he revealed at the very beginning of creation, the very first act, let there be light, and he releases the fullness of his shining glory which is without end. And oh yeah, God too is here. The Father to proclaim to you in the remembrance of your holy baptism, in which he has touched you with water. Those who were witnesses to it, you may have been too young to remember it if you were baptized in your infancy, can tell you that the word that was hidden in the water was proclaimed, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. You are now adopted by God's grace as his child. You are now washed clean of all your sins, sealed for salvation, and given the gift of God's Holy Spirit. You have continued to hear as you come here to this humble little church for the past 13 plus years now for those of us who have made this our church home and for a few years longer than that for many, many other Christians. We see in this place the glory of God's presence but also the presence of all the people of God, the communion of saints. That's what the Holy Christian Church is. Not just in this Holy Communion, but to know that we are joined as God's faithful people all the time. We sing it in the communion liturgy, but it's true all the time. And even though we can't feel the touch of those many for whom we would long to have just one more hug, one more word, even just a chance to say farewell. God bless. See you soon. God proclaims to us it's real. And the food upon which you feast this day that will actually literally touch your tongues, enter into your bodies, hidden within that because it is what Jesus says it is it is also his flesh and blood the very same in which he lived he died and he rose again that now his disciples are able to testify to us oh yeah and we saw the fullness of his glory it disappeared after that as we left that holy mountain but it will reappear in its fullness when we reach the mountaintop of heaven. This is the reality for us, that everything that we experience in this life is an encounter with this very same reality. Even with non-Christians, it is still in part. This is why when we receive good advice, for example, it ought to be heard for what it is from who it is and not just looking and saying, well, of course she'd say that. She always says that. But to really hear it and all the more so when it comes from Christians to give admonition regarding 
necessary corrections in our lives. Encouragement to continue to walk this life of faith. And when it is expressions of love, hug and touch, for which so many of us long, especially in this age of COVID-19, to experience in the fullness of the senses that God has given us by virtue of his creation of us in such a way to be reminded of firstly who he is. Jesus is acknowledged as a great teacher by much of the world, but he is not confessed for who he is as he reveals himself in this glorious episode For indeed, if he is God, and he needs to be heard, that means I might actually need to change my life in accord with his word. You're willing to do that. And even though we struggle and fight with the fallenness of world with regard to that, we can heed his word then that invites us to receive his forgiveness. The strength to go on, the power to, And also the reminder of the glory that is already hidden in you. Yes, this is your life. It's a mountaintop experience. Let all that you feel and touch and hear and smell and taste and see encourage you to go beyond the biological and go to the spiritual that God has set behind it. For indeed, he is eternally glorious. And join to him in faith, so are you. Disciples of Jesus, hear him for who he is. Always. Amen. Peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.